welcome to Bridgehampton Presbyterian Church. Our theme today is I Believe in the Bible. Join me in a call to worship. God calls together divine counsel to render judgment. God holds a plumb line to measure our faithfulness. Who can stand before the judgments of God? How shall we know what God expects of us? Lift up your prayers for God's mercy. Earnestly seek to know the ways of truth and salvation. Can we distinguish faithfulness from popular success? What must we do to inherit eternal life? God's judgment comes to all nations of the earth. God's covenant with us involves the care for all people. God will deliver us from all evil. We are here to worship and praise our God. Let us worship God. confession. Righteous God, we confess our easy compliance with the ways of the world. We are happy to accept advantages for ourselves that are unavailable to many. We do not call oppressors to account or recognize our own oppressive ways. We pass by many who suffer as if their suffering were no concern of ours. Our practice of faith gives neither offense nor inspiration. We are troubled when we see our, ourselves this way. Redeem us, O God. Amen. We are rescued from the shadows of our sinfulness by the grace of Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness for all who accept the gracious gift of a loving God. We open ourselves now to receive anew the gospel and all its power. We seek to share the inheritance of the saints by becoming good neighbors to the weak and needy, the lonely and destitute. In this way, we bear the fruits of our forgiveness.
morning. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. Have a good day. Good morning. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Happy Sunday and peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you to you and you and you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Let hope guide your life. Peace be with you. <laughs> Good morning. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> Let us listen for the word of God. A prayer for illumination. Lord, you gave us your word for a purpose that our lives may be changed. Help us now to listen to how that can happen and seek to be the change you want us to be. Amen. And our reading this morning is taken from the New Testament letter to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 9 through 16. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and struggle because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the saviour of all people, especially of those who believe. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. May God add God's blessing to these words of Scripture. I'm taking as my theme today, I believe in the Bible. I would be a very rich man if I could have a dollar for every time somebody told me they had read the Bible. Young and old, Christians, Muslims, atheists, agnostics, people of all faiths, and people not even sure what faith might be, have looked me in the eye and told me they have read the Bible. Quite often, the fact of their reading is accompanied by some comment about a section of the Bible they found particularly difficult. An Old Testament passage that seemed to justify genocide. Something Paul wrote that made him a woman hater. Or maybe simply the comment that they just didn't get all those laws and lists. And in any case, how can we take seriously a book that begins by contradicting science and telling us the world was made in six days. Isn't it all just myths and made-up stories? When I press for more details as to what particular book within the Bible they are referring to, I'm often met with a blank stare or a dismissive shrug of shoulders. And if I really press the issue, I sometimes discover they hadn't actually read about the problem themselves, they read it in a book that someone else had written about something, or even in some work of fiction, such as the Da Vinci Code. And as to what people mean by reading, I'm not always sure 
By which I mean that I have read Lord of the Rings, the Harry Potter series, and several of Shakespeare's plays. But in each case, I could hardly quote you chapter and verse. I can recall incidents and characters and maybe give you a general overview, but not enough to qualify me as an authority. Indeed, some of the opinions I could offer would be insights I'd picked up during school days or from things I'd read or seen on TV. And some of those comments may be reasonably accurate. Others would be educated guesses and some of them would just be plain wrong. You know, if you go on the internet, you can find so much material that relates to the Bible that simply to trawl through it is an impossible task. You can find sites that will list for you all the mistakes and contradictions and faults with the Bible, and you will find those who will claim to authentically explain every sentence in more detail than you could ever have imagined. And as with any belief-related topic on the internet, much of the information is, let us say, less than accurate and subject to no moderation other than the bias, prejudice and pet peeves of the authors. Likewise with radio and television. And of course, if it's on Facebook, it must be true, right? A lot of people tell me they have read the Bible. But as I say, I wonder what they mean by having read the Bible. And it's not that I have a problem with folk reading the Bible. In fact, that's a practice I would strongly encourage. The problem is that often based on a rather cursory reading, they're under the impression they've become an expert and are able to tell others either about its irrelevance or its validity. The Bible, after all, is not a book like other books. In fact, it's not really a book, it's a collection of 66 individual books that in written form span at least 3,000 years with oral traditions that lay behind those written forms going back to times we can only guess at. And those books are not the product of any single author, nor do the books belong with any single genre of literature. There is myth and saga and poetry and history and drama and regulations and genealogies and prophecies and dreams and visions and letters and gospels to name but a few. And every single word was written in ancient languages that most of us do not speak and within cultures that are not our own. The Bible is not the sort of collection of books you can just pick up, skim the pages and then claim to have read with understanding or depth. And then there's that peculiar role of that thing we call faith in our understanding of the Bible. Some in our day are particularly hostile towards the word faith, implying that it's akin to ignorance or a prelude to justifying unjustifiable actions. Some see faith as the most arrogant of all claims, particularly when it comes to ancient written words. When we say we believe in the Bible, are we simply implying that our books are right and all others are false? What right have we to claim that our religion is better than any other on the grounds that it is so simply because we say that God says that it is so and that's the end of the argument? In a rational world, that sort of nonsense makes us a laughing stock. However, 
there are certain things that can be said about the Christian scriptures that make perfect sense. Firstly, that the various authors of the variety of books are united by a common theme that could be described as one-on-one -on -one experience of the divine. Their experiences are not all the same, and neither do they all reach the same conclusions about what the nature of God may be. But their claim is to have encountered God, some to greater degree than others. It's therefore reasonable to suggest that if there is a God, and there are people who throughout the centuries have encountered that God, then their experiences may well mirror experiences that are recorded in the books of the Bible. Therefore, should we wish to encounter the divine, a good place to start would be looking at those experiences and seeing if they resonate with our own. If we seek one-on-one -on -one experience of the divine, then examining the books of the Bible should help us. But why not just lock in any spiritual volume? Well, the Bible is different to other religious works. It differs from works such as the Quran or the Book of Mormon as it doesn't claim to be an individual revelation to any one person at a given point in time. It contains the voices of many, many folk from many, many ages. And I can't speak for you, but I personally am more inclined to listen to the joint testimony of several witnesses rather than one person who claims to have had a special revelation. The Bible is also rather different from the collections of Hindu or Buddhist or other scriptures in that the Bible contains what we call canonical scriptures. In its earliest centuries, the church defined which books would be considered part of Christian scripture and which books would be excluded. And the process by which that had happened and the criteria by which individual books were evaluated, well, that's a study all of its own. But it is part of the Bible's unique nature that sets it apart from other spiritual works. You could say that what is in it is in it for a purpose. Furthermore, those books of the Bible have had such a profound influence on our language and thought forms and even the images we use to communicate to one another. Its words are deeply ingrained in our own words and our own culture. Often people are surprised to learn that even the most contemporary sounding phrase such as, oh, chasing the wind, is actually rooted in biblical literature. Likewise, as biblical morality and law, maybe the greatest example being the Ten Commandments, they've been a bedrock against which we have sought to discern what is right and what is wrong. The Bible is like no other collection of books in terms of its composition or its influence. But to return to those original thoughts about reading the Bible, how do we seek to understand this complicated, sometimes seemingly contradictory collection of carefully crafted spiritual insights that spans generations and whose source is from numerous cultures and circumstances. Being Presbyterian, I'd suggest the most positive thing we can do is take on board one of the reformer John Calvin's insights. He suggests that if we seek to hear God through Scripture, then we should also seek God through prayer. Calvin goes as far to suggest 
that without the influence in our lives of the Holy Spirit who inspired the authors of Scripture, then we'll never understand their words. In one of his passages, he speaks of the Holy Spirit as spectacles, reading glasses, through whom the Scriptures gain their focus. Now, I recall in my own spiritual journey, struggling to understand how these ancient words could possibly have anything to do with my modern life. And then a friend asked me, did you pray before you read the Bible? And of course, I hadn't. But I started to. And it wasn't an instant revelation, but things began to come clearer. Things started to connect. It made sense to be open to the one who inspired the authors in order to understand what they were trying to say. So, yeah, I've discovered prayer is an important part of the process. But it remains a formidable task. As I said at the start, there's a difference between having a cursory knowledge of what the Bible may contain and understanding and applying its lessons to our lives. And there are all those bits which we may never fully understand and about which greater minds than our own have still to come to any conclusions. But the good news, we don't have to know it all. We don't have to understand it all to gain benefit from prayerfully reading Scripture. We can start exactly where we are. Now over the next few weeks, I'm going to digress from my I Believe series and I want to touch on a few of the repeating themes of the Bible. Because there are various things that just keep coming back and being re-spoken of. One of the themes is that of creating. From beginning to end, the Bible speaks about the divine initiative that brought all things into being and continues to renew and recreate life. There's another big theme, covenant. Time and time again, God seeks to enter into a relationship of accountability with both individuals and communities of people. And time and time again, people betray their trust in him, but always God's side of the equation remains intact. A third theme seems to be that of dying. In book after biblical book, death is pictured, but not as the ultimate calamity, it seems, but rather as a way of transformation. Nothing new comes till what has gone before passes away. And if I'm going to talk about dying, I better also take a look at living, because throughout the Bible, a distinction made between simply existing and really living. But Hey, maybe I'll find some other themes as well. All that's to come. For now, let me conclude by inviting you to take our Christian scriptures seriously. Don't be fooled by those who have skimmed the surface and then dismissed it. Don't focus on the bits that are hard, but seek to understand the truths God wants you to understand right now. And be prayerful in your approach to Bible reading. I promise you, it'll make all the difference. It makes sense to ask God's Spirit to help us understand God's Word. And finally, recognize what a unique collection of spiritual knowledge is offered to us through the 66 books of the Bible. Centuries of wisdom and knowledge that has been tried and tested and found to be genuine awaits 
our discovery. May God help us rediscover God's word in our own day and in our own way. Because to God's name be all the glory. Amen. Join me in the affirmation of faith. God wills that we should live by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the love of God and in the communion of the Holy Spirit. We are not our own. We have bought with our price. The Lord Jesus Christ loved us and gave, us, gave himself for us. We entrust ourselves completely to his care, giving thanks each day for his wonderful goodness. We love because God first loved us. God loves us in Christ with a love that never ends. Amazed by grace, we no longer live for ourselves. We live for the Lord who died and rose again, triumphant over death for our sake. Therefore, we take those around us to heart, especially those in particular need, knowing that Christ died for them no less than for us. Amen. May these gifts in our lives bear fruit in many good works, increasing among all people knowledge of God, patience and endurance, wisdom and understanding, love and joy. We would act with compassion toward one another and toward neighbors near and far. Thank for the mercy you have shown us. We pledge ourselves and these offerings to extend mercy to all. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
great God, the God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, Moses and Zipporah. From them have come a mighty people you have chosen to call your own. You have spoken through your prophets. Your priests have taught your people how to worship your name. With wisdom, scribes have delivered your word. With poetry, writers have penned praise in your honor. Nations have been brought to submission in the face of your judgment. History has recorded testimony of your mercy that has withstood the ages. What are we compared to your grandeur and grace? Yet, in love you sent us your Son, Jesus Christ. He walked among your people and taught them your will. He enlightened his followers to the sense of your commandments. He stooped to hear the plight of the stranger and cast out demons from those who were oppressed. He suffered the shame of the cross for the sins of all your people and even now pulls us from the pit of our own disgrace and shame. The grave cannot contain your righteousness deliverance. He lives as our mediator and guide. Make us mindful of all who are part of your household. We particularly pray for all tra traveling through days of illness or suffering, for all those who have asked for our prayers and those we know who need our prayers. Diane, Noreen, Margaret, Peggy, Julie, Melissa, Graham, Amy, Connie, Dr. and Mrs. Kerr, Bruce, Fred, Patrick, Mabel, Rini, Evelyn, Vivi, Taylor, those in enhanced care in the West Hampton Care Center, Bill, Jane, Fred, we offer prayers for all the healthcare workers continuing to work against the pandemic, in particular, Lindsay Wigley and Holly Halsey. We remember our sister church and the people of Guinness, Cuba. We pray for peace in our world and for those in positions of leadership. We pray for your church, asking the, that we may face with courage the challenges of our own day. On this day, we thank you for the books of the Bible and the many themes that run through them. Help us to read with the eyes of your Holy Spirit that the lessons we learn may be lived out in our daily relationships with one another. All our prayers we offer in the name and through the merit of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen
Thanks for being with us today. Now, go with joy, go with peace, go with love, go with hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.